ABC 10 News at 5 starts right now. A cold winter storm bringing rain and snow to San Diego County, and it is not over yet. When we can expect to see the next wave move in. Plus, local restaurants and businesses could be just days away from less restrictions. The two ways San Diego County can move into that red tier. And this picture appears to show a San Diego police officer pointing a gun at a child. The body camera video the department just released showing what really happened. ABC 10 News at 5 starts now. From heavy downpours to hail and even snow, a slow moving winter storm is making its presence known as it moves through San Diego County. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Pena. And I'm Steve Atkinson and more is on the way, but we are seeing a little bit of a break right now. Some areas are seeing some partly cloudy skies and just a short time ago this rainbow appeared. This is over normal heights. We have team coverage of that storm, including a look at what's headed our way right now. Let's begin with our ABC 10 News reporter Cassie Carlin live in the gas lamp district. Cassie. Yeah, out here, sadly, in the gas lamp, we haven't seen a rainbow yet, but it is nice for right now. You can see those tents behind me. That's because a lot of these restaurants are trying to make sure that they're ready as more rain comes in. Wednesday, flashing lights reminded drivers headed to Mount Laguna they'd need their chains. Along the side of Sunrise Highway, chunks of ice warned of the slick road ahead. Neighbors saw hail in Crest and Sabre Springs. And just about everywhere in between, from Hamul to Kearney Mesa, saw spotty showers. Yeah, I actually stay downtown, so I heard it, it started like 3 this morning. It was hitting my window hard. Christina Lambert grew up in Chicago and moved to San Diego. It's like the weather act bipolar like Chicago. So it's been kind of bipolar. <laughs> Chilly and rainy one minute and warm and sunny the next, drying the remaining puddles in the gas lamp before the next storm cell moves through. Her heart goes out to the businesses impacted by the weather on top of the pandemic. I feel like it's terrible because they had, since they were, they moving outside, like everything's getting wet up, so they have to be considerate of the rain now. It's terrible. I feel bad for them. Lambert's not excited for more rain heading our way, even though we're having a relatively dry winter. Lambert said that she's also keeping that umbrella handy. And as the sun is going down, it is getting pretty chilly out here in the gas lamp. So if you are going out tonight, I'd definitely grab a jacket. Reporting live here in gas lamp quarter, Cassie Carlisle, ABC 10 News. Good advice, Cassie. Thank you. No signs yet as lifeguards search for a body spotted in the water in La Jolla. Our ABC 10 News breaking news tracker spotted lifeguards crews, as you can see, searching from those boats and those jet skis. There were also divers too. Now this morning, a couple was enjoying the ocean view out their window when they spotted a fully clothed man at the water's edge. The tide pulled the body back into the ocean before the couple could get out there to help. Lifeguards do tell us that high tide and the strong current make the search more challenging. And as we mentioned, we are expecting more rain to come through tonight and tomorrow. Our meteorologist Angelica Campos is tracking what is left of this slow moving storm. Angelica. I see. I love how everyone describes the weather, but it certainly has been just kind of a little bit of everything today. As we look at the rain totals, pretty impressive. And the good news about the dry breaks is that it helps to dry the roads, which makes it better for drivers. And of course, it also allows the ground to soak up that rainfall before the next batch moves in. We've seen over half an inch in Otay and Vista Escondido just about that half an inch mark or just below Fashion Valley, just below that half an inch and close to a quarter of an inch in Encinitas. It is pretty calm right now, but it doesn't mean the storm is over. We really haven't even gotten to the storm. We only dealt with the cold front early this morning, which brought all the thunderstorms and hail. The storm itself is still well to the north, but the bands wrapping around it is what's going to be moving in tonight. And you see already some of that moisture just offshore but it really hasn't been doing much for us this afternoon. That will be changing as we go into tonight, and there's going to be the possibility for more thunderstorms into the overnight hours and early tomorrow, and there's still plenty of chances for heavy rain and flash flooding. We'll make sure to break it all down hour by hour and what to expect for the next few days. Angelica, thank you, and you can keep track of the weather in your own neighborhood by downloading our free mobile, uh, mobile app. Just go to the App Store and search 10 News. Now to the latest on the coronavirus and the major milestone for President Biden. Today, the House took its final vote and passed the president's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. That bill includes direct payments of up to $1,400 per person to families earning less than $160,000 a year and individuals less than $80,000. A $300 weekly federal boost to unemployment benefits through September 6th 
$15 billion for long-term low-interest loans for small businesses and funding to chart the next somewhat thornier phase of the pandemic, like vaccine distribution and school reopenings. This bill represents a historic, historic victory for the American people. I look forward to signing it later this week. Everything in the American Rescue Plan addresses a real need. Despite the bill's popularity in polls, not a single Republican in the Senate voted in favor. Around this time next week, county leaders expect San Diego to drop down into the red tier. As ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala explains, there are two paths to getting there. Next week, San Diego County could qualify to drop down into the red tier, allowing more businesses like restaurants, gyms, museums and movie theaters to reopen indoors with modifications and limited capacities. This has been a lot of hard work of San Diegans and lowering the case count, uh, a lot of hard work in getting vaccines into arms. While our case rate this week was 8.8 .8 per 100,000 people, barely above the seven needed to reopen now, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says there are two paths to the red tier next week. One, if the state reaches 2 million vaccine doses given in the hardest hit areas, then the case rate needed would change to 10, making San Diego eligible. The second one, even if the state doesn't uh, hit that, we have another path to get there with the percentage of positive and health equity indexes, but we feel confident the state will get to that 2 million vaccines. In addition to that change, on Monday, the county will also begin offering COVID-19 vaccines to people between the ages of 16 and 64, with specific underlying health conditions outlined by the state. Includes cancer, chronic kidney disease, uh, chronic pulmonary disease, sickle cell, obesity, Down syndrome. But Fletcher says appointments could be very limited until our vaccine supply increases. He says guidance for those who qualify will be posted to the county's website in the next day or two. So far, the county says 25% of San Diegans have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Governor Gavin Newsom said we're close to hitting that goal of 2 million vaccinated in vulnerable communities to change the tier requirements. During a tour of an L.A. County vaccine center, he said the vaccination equity goal should be reached by Friday. Southern California, you will be a beneficiary of this, specifically L.A. will be a big beneficiary of this new metric that likely will be met on Friday and moving through the weekend into next week you will see more activity, a more loosening of the tiers. The governor said the state has administered 11 million vaccinations so far. It was the hardest thing. Having your child cry, say, mommy, help me. That Oceanside mother is sharing her heartbreak after her three-year-old son fell ill with a severe case of a rare COVID-19 complication. As our ABC tennis reporter Michael Chin found out, the condition quickly became life threatening. Brielle Bracey, her husband Devin, and three year old son Kawhi all tested positive for COVID in early February. Brielle had the most severe symptoms. Kawhi appeared to be asymptomatic. Obviously, we did watch him and monitor him closely, but he was just his normal self. Then, a month later, last Wednesday, just shaking, violently shaking. So he goes to walk and he's trembling and then he fell. At Rady Children's Hospital, Kawhi was diagnosed with pneumonia and MIS-C, which stands for multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. An inflammatory reaction some two to six weeks after exposure to COVID. It's hard um, dealing with watching your child uh, struggle to survive. Kawhi developed a fever, a rash all over his body, stomach pains. His heart wasn't pumping correctly. His oxygen levels dropped to dangerous levels. It was the hardest thing, having your child cry. Say, mommy, help me. Kawhi's treatment regimen included a blood transfusion, steroids, and onakinra, a drug used to treat arthritis. A week later, signs of hope. His heart issues have improved, though his oxygen levels are not all the way back. Brielle says she's hopeful Kawhi will be released in the next few weeks. They're saying probably for the rest of his life, they're going to have to monitor his heart. Brielle says she's sharing her story to increase awareness so parents can get help quickly. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. No child should have to suffer this way. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News. So hard for a parent to watch that. Wow. Since April, Rady Children's Hospital reports nearly 60 cases of Miss C. The majority of those in just the last few months. A GoFundMe campaign has been set up to help with Kawhi's aftercare and other expenses. 
There is a link right now on our homepage. And here are our latest numbers on coronavirus in San Diego County. 349 new cases were reported today. That brings our total to more than 264,000. There were also eight new deaths, bringing that total to 3,413. Also today, President Biden will give his first primetime address to the nation tomorrow night. He's expected to discuss the year long pandemic and his recovery plan. We'll carry it live tomorrow night at five right here on ABC 10, followed by ABC 10 News. A third degree murder charge could be added against the former Minneapolis police officer accused of killing George Floyd. Today, the Minnesota Supreme Court denied an appeal by Derek Chauvin seeking to prevent the charge. Chauvin is already charged with second degree murder. Prosecutors could choose to add the third degree charge because it may be easier to prove if the jury doesn't go for second degree. Video showed him kneeling on Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. Jury selection for the trial is underway.